Welcome to Daz Geek. We are going to have some fun here today. So in this video I was making, uh, I wanted to install an MSI H81i motherboard. This is a mini ITX motherboard, so it's very small. It's meant to fit in a little Cooler Master ITX case, which is perfect for a server, or some people even have enough power in these things that they could be a full-fledged gaming Goliath. But for me, it was something I used as a media server for a while, and then it became a web server. And then it became a media center again, and I've repurposed it since to be a streaming machine for the weekends when I stream. So right now, it currently has an APU 5000 AMD motherboard CPU combo. It's a, it's a great little motherboard and CPU combo. It's been very stable. It's worked very well, but we're going to upgrade it with this MSI H81i motherboard and an Intel Core i3 processor, which is not by any means top of the line or the best, but it's certainly a lot faster than the little AMD machine, which isn't meant for speed. It was meant for stability, so it's not a knock on that little board at all. It was a great board. It ran great. The fact that the CPU was already mounted, everything was done for you, made it super easy. So it was a great little setup. So here's a look at the MSI. You can see it's got all the things you would expect on a normal motherboard, but all shrunk down with very little space. You got the HDMI, you've got your sound, you've got your Ethernet, VGA, DVI, You've got everything you need right on that little motherboard, and we're going to put this processor inside. Now, when I was recording this video, uh, one of the things that I wanted to make sure is that I tested this motherboard CPU combo prior to actually installing it physically in the case, because when you're working with those little cases, it can be a real pain. So the first thing we want to do is you want to take this little tab here, and you want to move it up and you want to remove this piece of plastic. Now this piece of plastic protects the circuitry underneath from getting dust and particles and things like that underneath. So you want to remove that and then you're going to uh, be ready to insert your CPU in there. And how this little bracket works is that essentially it's going to go into this little bolt here. You're going to see when I get up close, these little grooves, they're going to, it's going to socket right in there, and then you're going to push that down once the processor's inside, and you'll be good to go. And it's, it uses quite a bit of force, so just be prepared for that. Uh, but one thing I want to point out is that on every processor or motherboard, for the most part, you're going to have a little trick, which is you're going to look for the little dot on the CPU, and you're going to look for the little dot on the motherboard itself. So here's our Core i3. It's a beauty. Great little processor. Plenty of strength to do some minor gaming on, um, to do applications, streaming, that type of thing. You can do it on the i3 without much problem at all. Uh, a lot of people say you got to have an i5 or i7. It's just not the case. If you have everything tuned correctly, you could certainly do everything you need to on an i3. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and insert this processor. And again, you want to look at the arrows and make sure that they line up with each other. So there will be a little arrow on the motherboard itself and a little arrow on the processor. You can see here, I'm going to point it out if I can get it in focus here. All right, so there's that little arrow in the corner of the chip. And you want to line that arrow up with the arrow that's there on the motherboard. Let me see if I can show that here. And there's the arrow on the motherboard itself. And the other thing you can look for is there's two little notches when you're putting that CPU in. And those little notches on the left and right side obviously would need to line up with the notches on the motherboard. You'll see a little uh, notches sticking out on the motherboard and you'll see a little notches inverted inside the chip. So now that we've got that placed in, you want to make sure it's nice and secure. We're going to get our CPU fan ready here and just take a look. And you can see they already put some thermal paste on here. It's a dry version of thermal paste. So once it heats up, it'll create a nice uh, conduction to the processor itself. And so we're almost ready to put that on. But first, we've got to get the CPU seated in its home. So we're going to use that bracket. And here's where you're going to put a lot more force than you really want to messing with this kind of stuff. But... Don't worry, it will go in. You want to make sure it's seated in there solidly. And so now we can put our CPU fan in. And this type of CPU fan is quite easy, a lot different than a water cooling system. 
Uh, you don't have to change the brackets on the back of the motherboard or anything. You're literally just lining up the CPU fan with the holes that are in the motherboard and you're going to push these tabs on the side here down and then you're going to twist them. So you push them down and give them a slight twist and when you're done you want to check and make sure it's seated nicely and then you want to flip over the, the motherboard here and you will see the little tabs popping out underneath and they should all be about the same length um, all the way across down below okay so now I am just giving you a view here of the actual case itself the little mini ITX case we've got to remove some of the RAM uh, first because we want to boot this outside of the actual ITX case so I need to pull the RAM out to get a clean boot and I'm gonna need to pull the power cables off of the current motherboard and kind of move them to the outside and connect them to this external motherboard just to make sure that we get a good power up and we don't have a dead motherboard and I'm going to give you a little spoiler here. Guess what? This motherboard ends up having a major issue. So it's very, very good idea to check your motherboard and CPU before you go through all the hassle, especially in a little mini ITX case of pulling out all the power cables, of pulling out your power supply, of taking everything apart. So here is a view. Uh, of the motherboard and the RAM I'm about to put inside and then once the power connections are done we'll be good so RAM very similar to CPU you've got a little slot there and you want to just line that up with the slot that's inside of the uh, RAM holder RAM holder on the motherboard that's what I'm gonna call it that's what we're going with and you want to kind of line it up first with both sides and there's a tab on the motherboard where the RAM goes that you want to make sure is pulled down first and then once you slide in the stick you want to apply even pressure on the left and right side and it will sink right in so again look for that tab line it up we've already pulled the tab on the actual motherboard down that you that will give you that clicking sound when it's nice and well seated and we give that even pressure and you just want to make sure they should be even with one another uh, and then here you see we've got the CPU fan hooked up you gotta make sure that CPU fan is hooked up before you do any powering on because you will burn this processor out very very fast they heat up very fast and they will burn out uh, before you can uh, even see the BIOS and then turn it off you could potentially damage the processor so just make sure you have your CPU fan hooked up and there should be in the manual a area that shows you CPU where the CPU fan goes if it's not labeled on the motherboard in this case it was and so now you have your main power for your motherboard and then you're also going to have your ATX power so for all this old school folks that just had the one power uh, remember these motherboards have two and then you need to hook up your power switch the jumper from your case this is that little jumper cable from your case to your actual motherboard and that allows the power switch on the front to work now you can rig that and make it so it doesn't require that but what's the fun in uh, breaking something that's working perfectly so just move that little power switch over and this is a view that's the ATX power there for you you can see the little jumper on the other side that's connected for our power switch you can see the fans going and everything is looking lovely except that it's not this motherboard is completely dead I had so many issues with this motherboard I could not get it to work or power on to a BIOS I tried everything that I knew and the problem was it was about 8 o'clock uh, and on a Friday night and I was streaming the next morning on a Saturday and no matter what I tried, you can see I moved it in all types of different positions, changed things out. This thing was dead, dead, dead. So I ran downstairs and I told my family, it's an emergency. We've got to go to Fry's right now. We have two hours before it closes. And I'm going to show you just a little funny clip here of our adventure on our way to Fry's. Here we go. We're in an emergency right now. We are on our way to Fry's to get our motherboard. My wife is mad because I've loaded up the kids. <laughs> the motherboard we got in is dead and we are on our way as fast as All we can. All right, so 
I was so pissed that I had a dead motherboard. If you know anything about me, I cannot stand it when something computer related is broken. Uh, so we ran out, we got a new motherboard. I got this EVGA Z170 Stinger. It's a very good motherboard. Uh, once the BIOS is flashed, it definitely had some issues before the BIOS was flashed, but I mean, it did boot straight into BIOS so I could fix those issues, unlike the MSI, which was completely dead. And so we're doing the same connection here externally. We're going to hook up our power uh, connection. We've got to hook up our pins and all of that. But I'll tell you that I've been very disappointed. That's the second MSI motherboard that I've had that's come dead on arrival. And I, in, in my life of working on computers for almost 20 years now, uh, including running a shop with my dad. So we were running computers in and out the door constantly in our little shop. Um, I haven't run across that many dead motherboards from a single manufacturer in a long time. So I don't know what MSI is doing with their quality control, but it's horrendous. And so EVGA, um, ASRock have created some really great boards. Gigabyte has some great boards out there. I've had good luck with them. Uh, ASRock probably is my go-to at the moment, honestly, between cost and their quality control. It's just fantastic. But EVGA, you've got to love everything pretty much they produce. So I'm always on board with an EVGA anything. I've got their power supplies. Um, and other uh, components that I use of theirs, their video cards, they're just, they're a really great manufacturer. So we've got this EVGA Stinger, and like I said, we're going to connect it in the same way that we did uh, the other motherboard, and you'll see here that we got a BIOS connection almost right away, which once we get everything set up, once we get the fan in, the power connected, of course you got to make sure the CPU fan's connected. You see the wires are everywhere because I was fooling I must have taken the fan off of the MSI motherboard and the CPU and reseated it a hundred times just to make sure it wasn't me. Um, and then I didn't know if I had a bad CPU either. That was possibility, but um, highly unlikely. Intel has some very, very good quality control, so I didn't suspect that. I knew my RAM was good um, because it obviously had worked in the other machine and I had tested it again. Uh, in several different slots and just using one piece of RAM on the MSI and everything else. But the EVGA, highly rated. Um, the one thing you'll see on the forums that complain about this board is that you do need to flash the BIOS for compatibility issues, but at least you can get to the BIOS. At least you can get to the point where you can install an operating system. So there were a couple funky things that I ran into, but once the BIOS was flashed, we were good to go. Um, not a lot of companies make these little mini ITX motherboards to begin with, so it's it's one of those proprietary things uh, right off the bat. So not a lot of manufacturers out there developing them. But uh, EVGA, I think, did a really good job with this. Everything worked right away. We put our RAM in, we got our power connections up, and we're good to go. Just to mention, I am not in a high static environment and have... Um, tile and wood floors if you have carpet and that type of thing you may want to be a lot more careful with static electricity uh, although a lot of the motherboards and components these days have a much higher resistance to that stuff you'll see military grade um, compliance to static electricity so uh, not anything I've ever run into an issue with but if you live in an area or are sitting on standing on carpet you may want to consider ensuring that you uh, de-static yourself and here you can see they color coded the jumpers for power for reset for everything and that's just beautiful it makes it so much easier than trying to look through a manual and find it and there you go there's the bio screen we are home free now isn't that amazing a motherboard that actually works MSI maybe you should take notes this is what it's supposed to look like when it boots maybe you should do some more quality control like I said, it's not my first one. Motherboards do go dead and come dead on arrival sometimes, but I've just been having a bad run with them. And here you can see the full setup. You've got the CX430 watt power supply, a little 290 or 280 XFX uh, video card. I don't remember. It's pretty pretty slow, uh, low to mid mid range card, but perfect for what I'm doing. Just a little bit of gaming. You can see how compact everything is inside an ITX case. In any case, I hope you've had some fun watching this video. Maybe learned a thing or two if you're interested in building your own PC. It is a ton of fun, and you do run into issues, even if you're an expert from time to time. And the key is just to go through methodically and roll out one piece uh, 
as you can. So roll out RAM, roll out the processor, roll, make sure you got everything seated correctly, reseated even if you think it is seated correctly. And uh, then the most important part is if you run into a major issue, you've got to get the family loaded up into a car and head to a store where you can spend a lot more money than what you could have got it for online and buy yourself a motherboard so you can get it up and running that night so you can stream the next morning. And so I hope you've enjoyed this. Leave your comments below. Let me know some of the bad experiences you've had with some manufacturers or broken parts or anything along those lines. Please hit subscribe. It's really easy. It's just a click and it helps me out a lot. I really appreciate everything you guys are doing here. This MSI H81 can go to Hades because we got the EVGA stinger. All right. Talk to you all later.